Okay, value object. A value object is a custom class that only holds variables for a given object. It is very useful for transferring data throughout an application and they are simple to use. Value objects can be useful for any type of data of which a single object would have any number of variables. For example, a coach might want to keep track of a player on the team, such as their position, name, age, nickname, injuries, practices, time actually played, maybe even the time they spent on the bench. As a designer, you would create a player VO, meaning a player value object, which will store all the public variables needed for each player. Then in the main application, you can have one player object per person. For this, ScreenCrafts will create a simple value object that represents a player. apologize ahead of time. I had to do this ahead of time because I've done this over and over. I cannot type and talk at the same time. So I will have to explain to you first things first. First you need to come over and create a new action script class. And I've already done this once so we would put it in com.examples.bo. It remembers it. And you would call it um, player capital V, capital O. The reason why it's giving me a warning, don't worry about that. We're going to, um, it's because there's one that already exists. I'll say cancel, but you would say finish. Okay. And the reason why there's a VO is because that signifies that it's a value object and it's easy for other people to see. You don't, uh, it's not required that you do so, but it does make it easier for other people to tell that this is a value object and it doesn't extend anything. So you would click finish, um, but I already have it done. So it's right here. Here's our player value object. And in here we have a bunch of public, well, we only have three, but you could have any number. We have a bunch of public variables. And in this case, we have a public variable that's a name, it's a string, and another one that is for the position of the player, which is a string, and another public variable that is a jersey number, which is an integer. Note that some of some say that these should be private and that you should use getters and setters. And this is okay to do when it's necessary to the application, but in this case it's not. You should only do this when the application needs it. And so, for example, we're going to create, or they're already done, but we're going to create our value, um, our players, our objects. This is our objects right here. Okay. And we can play var David, who's a player value object, who's a new player value object. And here's David dot name, which is Dave. Here's his name. This is his his property right here, which is David Ardsma. And then David's position is a pitcher. And then David dot jersey number is 33. And then we'll create another one. This is our second one right here, our second value our object um, is Lauren and Lauren dot name is Lauren babe and Lauren's position is third baseman and Lauren's jersey number is 33 and we'll create a third one for this project and this is Jordan and his name is Jordan Pacheco and his position is third baseman first baseman and catcher and his jersey number was 58 and <clears throat> then what we can do is we can create a player's array which contains David, Lauren, and Jordan. And we can make it part of the class by making the array. Um, now we have one array that holds a bunch of player objects. And these are the player objects that are pushed into the array. So we created a value object that in its simplest form is a class that contains public properties of which we created in the main. Those objects are set 
and set the properties of the objects. This is the objects, and these are their properties. So, uh, don't move that. Names, uh, David.name. The property is the name itself, right here, or the picture, or the number. And there you have it. You've just created your own value object.